The crowd erupted into cheers again. Shaka Zulu nodded, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. The panther has proven his strength, he said, but the final test will decide all. That evening, the palace was filled with excitement and nervous energy. The final test would take place in the forest of the ancestors, where it was said that only the bravest dare to enter. The task was to retrieve the heart of Zulu, a rare flower that grew deep within the forest. It was a test of spirit, of courage. The next morning, as the sun began to rise, Hercules and the panther stood at the edge of the forest. I watched from a distance, my heart pounding in my chest. This was the moment that would determine who is truly worthy of Princess Nandi. With a nod from Shaka, they disappeared into the shadows of the trees. The forest swallowed them whole, leaving us in silence. Hours passed, then a whole day. The air grew heavy with anticipation. I could not tear my eyes away from the forest's edge, waiting for any sign of their return. It was nearly dusk when we saw movement. First, it was Hercules. He stumbled out of the forest, his clothes torn and face covered in dirt. His eyes were hollow, his hands empty, he had gone into the forest with confidence, but now he looked broken. Defeated, my heart sang for him. Then, out of the shadows, the panther emerged. In his hand, he held the heart of Zulu. It glowed softly in the dim light, a beacon of victory. He walked steadily, his face calm and composed, as if he had merely taken a walk through a garden. The crowd gasped, then erupted into cheers. I could hardly hear myself think as Shaka Zulu rose from his seat. The panther has completed the final test. He declared, he has shown speed, strength, and spirit. He is worthy of my daughter's hand. Hercules lowered his head, accepting his defeat with grace. The panther approached Princess Nundi, kneeling before her. I fought not just for you, he said in a quiet voice, but for the love of our land. Nandi smiled, her eyes shining, then rise, guardian of Africa. She said, for you have won both my heart and the kingdom's respect. And so, the African panther became the protector of our land. Standing beside Princess Nandi, Hercules left the kingdom with honor, forever respectful of the strength and wisdom he had witnessed. The kingdom sang of their battle for ages to come, a tale of strength, respect, and the love that could only be earned by one truly in harmony with the spirit of Africa. After the final challenge, the palace settled into a strange calm. The people knew that the African panther had proven himself in every test, but there was an unease that lingered in the air. As a servant, I heard many whispers in the palace corridor some celebrated the panther's victory, while others quietly questioned what Hercules might do next. Hercules remained in the kingdom for a few more days, his pride wounded but his spirit unbroken. I watched him as he wandered through the village, speaking with the elders, observing the way our people lived, though he had lost. He seemed to be searching for something, as if the answers to his defeat lay somewhere among us. One evening, I was assigned to bring food to the guest quarters where Hercules stayed. My hands trembled as I approached his door, unsure of how he would react. I knocked softly, and when he opened the door, his face was calm, though his eyes still held a trace of the fierce determination that had carried him through the trials. You have brought me food, he said, his voice surprisingly gentle. Thank you. I nodded and placed the tray on the small table inside. As I turned to leave, he spoke again. Tell me, he asked, why do your people honor the panther so? I have fought beasts and moved mountains, yet he is the one you call a hero. I paused, choosing my words carefully. The panther is one with the land. I replied, he listens to the earth, respects its power. Strength alone is not enough. You must have heart and wisdom. Hercules nodded slowly, his eyes drifting toward the window where the vast plains stretched out toward the horizon. I see, he muttered, perhaps I have much to learn. As I left, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. Hercules had come to understand something important. The next morning, he gathered his belongings and approached the palace courtyard to bid farewell to Shaka Zulu and Princess Nandi. He stood tall, his posture that of a warrior who had learned from his defeat. I leave today, he announced, his voice carrying across the courtyard. I have lost the trials, but I have gained wisdom. Your land is rich, not just in strength but in spirit. I go now to seek my own path. Princess Nandi nodded, her face calm and thoughtful. May you find what you seek? She replied. Hercules bowed deeply to her and to Shaka Zulu before turning away. The people watched as it disappeared into the distance, the sun casting his shadow far across the land. In his place, the panther now stood as the guardian of both Nandi and the kingdom.
As the days passed, life in the Zulu Kingdom began to return to normal. The people celebrated the panther's victory, and he took his place by Princess Nandi's side, not just as a warrior, but as a protector of our ways. Yet, beneath the joy, there was a tension that no one could quite place. One night, I found myself standing near the royal gardens, where Nandi often walked. The moon hung high in the sky, casting a pale light over the flowers. I heard footsteps approaching and turned to see the panda. He moved silently, his eyes scanning the garden until they rested on Nandi. She stood amidst the flowers, her face turned up toward the sky. Deep in thought, Nandi, he called softly. She turned, her eyes meeting his. You are troubled, she said. I can see it. The panda sighed, stepping closer. Yes, he admitted, I fear that our battle is not over. Hercules may have left, but his spirit lingers. The way he looked at our land, the questions he asked, he seeks something, and I do not know what. Nandi was quiet for a moment, her gaze shifting to the horizon. We must be vigilant, she said, but we must also live without fear. You are my guardian now, and I trust in your strength and wisdom. The panda nodded, the way shadow of doubt still clouded his eyes. I will watch over you, he promised, and over this land. Months passed, and the kingdom enjoyed a period of peace. The panther proved himself, not just as a warrior but as a wise leader, advising Shaka Zulu on matters of the kingdom. Yet, the uneasy had spoken of never completely fade.